In today's video, I survived 150 days in Grounded on Woe difficulty. This video will cover days 101 to 150. If you want to see the first 100 days, then check out this video right here. The goals for this video are to beat the two new bosses, 100% the game again, and collect as many trinkets and gold cards as possible. But before we get into it, only 10% of you are subscribed, so make sure you hit that button as it's free and you can change your mind at any time. We begin as we left off at the mystery machine, and I noticed I'd unlocked a monthly exclusive item in the shop. I then took a look at our creature cards to see we were now missing four creatures that had been newly added to the game. As I entered the base, I instantly unlocked level 1 Cozy. When I got closer, I unlocked the second level as well. This gave me some new emotes, but more importantly, a new mutation called Hauling Hero. Look at my old trophy collection. Believe it or not, these were all of the trophies in the game when 1.0 released. This game's changed a lot in a few months. I re-equipped my armor from the stand, and then headed to the resource analyzer to analyze some of the old items and unlock new recipes. I also used the ASL to purchase the sign set for May, which is only available this month, so if you haven't bought it yet, make sure to go and do it. As I had defeated the assistant manager previously, I was able to use the keycard to open this room in the oak lab to acquire the zipper and the chest with a few resources inside. I headed under the oak tree, as in the initial 100 days, I had failed to eliminate an infected wolf spider. But on my first attempt on day 101, I was able to defeat it. Sadly, I didn't get the gold card. Off to the pond lab, and since the storage room was changed in one of the updates, I was now able to loot all of the chests for a bunch of free loot. But the real reason I was here was to grab the Koi figurine, unlocking stage 1 of the Rascal Rogue mutation. I decided to replace my Lean 2 with a Crow Feather bed. I couldn't quite believe that I hadn't done this in the initial 100 days. What a noob. Next, it was time for the Hedge Lab, where I first grabbed the Aphid figurine before heading to the Super Chip room to grab our first Duper disc. We needed all three for the Super Duper, of course. I found this crow feather on the side of a hill, but sadly, when broken, it didn't drop the trinket. Off to the Haze Lab now to collect the Weevil figurine, and the second Super Duper disc that we needed. While entering the Black Ant Nest, I noticed a lot of food on the ground, so I decided to steal some, as I could throw it into my smoothie maker later. That's what we call good fodder. While in the Black Ant Lab, I headed to the secret room to grab the Yoked Girth figurine, unlocking stage 2 of a Rascal Rogue. While running around, my scabby started pinging, so I climbed up to this light where I had previously left a measly 100 raw science. I took out some Bombardier Beetles for my quest, but while looting one, I was able to get the gold card, our first, but certainly not last, of this 50 days. Well, you just knew that was gonna happen. Next stop was the Undershed Lab, where I was able to grab the Wendell figurine before heading deeper to grab the glorious recipe for the Mant Gong and Braziers. On the way out of the lab, I saw a scarab, Time to test my stealth. I was successfully able to sneak up on it and take it out, but sadly was scammed and only got two twinkling shells. Oh, I'm not having this. I'm oh, not having God. this. What, no, 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 no. Next was the Javamatic storage facility, where I grabbed the Mant statue. As I left, I realised I had left all of the burr floors that I had used to defend the Javamatic. I decided to break them to get the lint rope back, as lint is a valuable resource, and I couldn't just leave it sitting here. While in the upper yard, I discovered some locations that were added to the game at a later update, with two super mixers and the cootie catcher. I then saw my first wasps, which allowed me to peep both the wasps and the wasp drone, before also discovering the final super mixer. I headed into the Moldork castle and grabbed the moldy note, unlocking the moldy hoagie, along with the Moldock figurine, which meant I now had all seven figurines, and also unlocked stage three of Rascal Rogue. On the way home, I made a stop at the pond lab, as I needed more mussel sprouts for my smoothies, and while here, I picked up the final duper disc, which I had missed earlier. Next, I headed back to the upper yard, as I decided that it was time to take on some wasps. I distracted them one at a time, and used my salty club of the mother demon for maximum damage. After the two wasps came the drone, which despite being able to heal, was relatively easy. I used my bow to shoot down the nest, and my axe to chop it up, giving me wasp paper. I then headed to the Javamatic for the next wasp nest. 
they decided to gang up on me this time, and I forgot to watch my health, causing our first death of the video. I'm going to add this to the death counter from the first 100 days, putting us on 47 deaths. I got my stuff back and then got teamed up on again. Luckily, I was able to finish off the last two with no problems and then proceeded to destroy the hive, which gave me the message, the wasp hive has been disturbed. Meaning when I next sleep, it will open the composter. So after harvesting the wasp paper, I headed back to the oak lab to analyze all of the new wasp parts collected. I then inserted all three Jupiter discs into the super duper to unlock its full potential. Then when I slept in my bed that night, I got the composter cutscene showing the wasps had been released throughout the entire backyard, which also unlocked the composter for me to enter. I decided to decorate the base with the statues we had just collected, which unlocked levels 3 and 4 of coziness. I then built a bunch more random stuff to reach level 5, as this unlocks a bunch of new recipes, which I wanted. Now that I unlocked level 5, I could begin tearing down everything and making a much nicer looking room later. While breaking stuff, one of my plates got stuck inside the foundation. I moved the foundation and went down below, but it had grown legs and ran away, never to be seen again. Back to the upper yard and into the toolbox, where I used a black ox crossbow and an explosive arrow to destroy the gum nugget, giving me the sticky fingers trinket. One of the best new trinkets in the game. Time to explore the composter. I broke this sour candy as I was still missing the trinket, and then collected the first of four molars in here. Here's a cool little trick you can do to get the shortcut easily without running around the entire composter. After going up here, I grabbed another 700 raw science, and then proceeded to do some parkour up the face of the giant Tay's T, allowing me to get up to the milk molar up top. I headed to the widow area, but there's somehow two widows had spawned here. After taking out the spiderlings, I distracted the first widow and took it out, and then went in to eliminate the second Black Widow. This allowed me to not only collect the Milk Molar within the den, but also break the web sack, giving me the Whittle Widowling Trinket, adding yet another to the collection. You're joking. Not another one? I then got the fourth and final Milk Molar before grabbing a Scabby and heading into the nest to grab the recipe and another trinket from the skeleton. I discovered the field station, grabbed the data inside, grabbed another Scabby, and then also grabbed the last burgle chip. Finally, I grabbed the shield solidifier from within the sour rocket, and then I left. When I got back home, I put the trinkets into my chest. I currently had 20 out of 30 trinkets in the game. I headed back to the oak lab to give burgle the chip, and then use my raw science to unlock both the new mutation and the cookbook before spending my milk molars, upgrading my maximum health by a measly five points. With Rascal Rogue unlocked and the Sticky Fingers Trinket equipped, it was time to start punching aphids to try and steal the Speed Droplet. No luck yet, but I'll keep trying. I broke a crow feather on the pond and it somehow dropped nothing? What a scam. On day 106, I punched another aphid and this time I actually got the Speed Droplet. Hey, that's pretty good. While organising my chests at home, I got an infected bug raid. I headed down and took out an infected larva and infected weevil before they gave up altogether. That was easy. Back to the base and it was time to expand. I needed more room so that I could build all of the trophies and stuffed bugs in the game to complete one of our objectives. Speaking of objectives, I took on a moth to gather five moth fuzz and then used my staff to break flower petals and collect those too. I paid a quick visit to the infected wolfie as I needed the volatile fang. I died to an unblockable attack and then died again to the same attack, and again, before finally killing it, but not getting the trinket or the gold card. With the fuzz and petals, I was able to build a petal bed, and I began improving our coziness by building the statues we had collected, as well as a broodmother trophy, a trash can, and a bunch of other random stuff that was really good for coziness. I headed to the charcoal hot springs to collect some more charcoal, and then headed back to base, and used it to finish the hot tub, meaning we now had a level 5 coziness area in our base, which also stretched into the storage room. This wasn't on my list of goals, but it was something I wanted to do, as it would make life in my base much more pleasant due to all the extra buffs received. I was still a slave for Burgle, completing his quests every day, as I knew I'd need raw science for the super duper later on. I decided to make the broodmother armor, but after making the chestplate, I realised I didn't have enough venom for the leggings. So, there's only one solution. 
I made some Broodmother BLTs, activated the stuffed version and trophy, and headed to the arena to take it on. The Broodmother had slightly changed since the last time, but it was nothing I couldn't handle. At the end of the fight, I made sure to equip Dissection Expert, and when looting her, I got the Broodmother Trinket. With this in my inventory, I completely forgot that my goal was to get four Venom, and went home with only two. I still needed gold cards from all of the termite variations, so I took out the entire nest, including the king, but sadly, it wasn't enough to get a single gold card. I like it. Fun fact, they added nails to the holes in the shed deck, so that if you fall into the holes now, you can use them to climb out. I accidentally fell in one and was easily able to get out. While here, I decided to set up a zipline anchor so that I could easily get over here in the future. I paid a visit to the pond lab on the way home to collect the mussel sprouts, which I then used for more beefy slop smoothies, although I did save some as I wanted to start a mussel sprout farm to make it easier to get more. Look at this. The crow fell landed perfectly on top of the laser, so I had to climb all the way up to get it. Speaking of crow feathers, the next one I broke dropped a bag. This of course was the fancy fletchling trinket, adding yet another to the collection, meaning we only needed six more. I decided to beat up some diving bell spiders in the pond and got the gold card. For some strange reason, this unlocked stage three of Trapper Peeper, despite me not having 60 gold cards. I then took a silly death in the haze as I didn't see the bomb right next to me. It was time to get rid of the Wendell statue and replace it with the Mant Braziers as I wanted the plates used to build the statue to upgrade armour. This time I made sure to destroy the statue on flat ground so that I didn't lose any of the plates. While building the new sign sets I got a termite raid. Obviously the priority here was to finish building the sign sets which are exclusive to month of May. Anyway. I took out this silly little termite raid with ease and went back to the infected wolf spider. First attempt, I died to an unblockable OP attack. On my second try, I was able to defeat it, but yet again, no volatile fang or gold card. Back to those sign sets I made. I don't know what drugs the artist was on, but they were pretty powerful. Oh look, it's another infected wolf spider. I died to the unblockable attack again. Shock. Yet again, I defeated it on the second try but still no trinket or gold card. While in the fire ant nest, I noticed some rocks. These were marble upgrade rocks I'd somehow missed on my first playthrough. Not only that, but there were tier three rocks here. Speaking of things I'd missed, I grabbed 500 raw science from the fallen log and a supreme quartzite rock from the stump. I decided to break a billy hog on the way past as I thought it would be funny if I got a trinket that I already had. I somehow actually got the trinket. I wasn't laughing. I literally didn't need this. I already have one. I was also munching on sour candy to upgrade the sour sensation mutation, or as I like to call it, sour shit gambles, because it's not very good. I grabbed some salt from the salt mine and then used it to upgrade my Widow Dagger to Salty level seven in preparation for the Wasp Queen. For levels eight and nine, I needed salty jewels. So it was off to the Undershed Pipe to harvest twinkling shells from scarabs. With that done, I got the dagger to level eight. Time to attempt the Wasp Queen. I chose a full set of sleek fire ant armor as I didn't have the assassin armor and used the salt trinket and wasp roll. I was hoping this would be easy and I wouldn't need to try too hard. I only brought along five waspidotes for healing. Big mistake. The fight wasn't going badly until the wasp queen decided to summon. That's cool. I took them out and carried on, but then she just kept summoning. On woe, she can summon wasps an infinite number of times and eventually my heals ran out and I was just overrun, causing another death. But on the plus side, I got to steal two Wasp Queen chunks and keep my BBQ medley. On my way out of the composter, I was jumped by some ticks. It was dark, so I couldn't see anything, and one jumped right in my face, killing me. After gathering my stuff, I took out a ladybug and got yet another gold card. While fighting an orb weaver, I was killed by the grass. Does this really count as a death? Time to add some more garden patches to the farm. And it's coming along very nicely. Hey, no way. I died to the infected wolf spider again. Oh, oh. Nah, I never knew that. I never knew that. I'd been collecting loads of clay and pebblets, allowing me to expand the base by three layers. It's not much, but it's honest work. Hey, it's my favorite broken bug. Yet again, he does the attack which is guaranteed to kill me. Woo, fun. And yet again, I don't manage to steal the trinket or the gold card. Time for three more layers on the base and it is looking much bigger than it did previously. 
on day 124, I managed to dig up a grub and get yet another gold card before taking on the Broodmother again, giving me the venom I needed to finally finish my Broodmother set and upgrade it to level 9 sleek. I used the Super Duper to dupe my Mantis Kebab for only 1000 raw science, and then visited my best friend again. I managed to avoid his triple explosion as he was stuck, but then I got stuck and he hit me with his ranged attack, killing me again. I then died again and again before killing it, but still no trinket or gold card. Time to take on the Mantis, and on the very first hit I stole the trinket. Talk about lucky. This fight is completely broken if you use melee, and it wasn't long before I died, as I was unable to perfect block due to debuffs. On my second attempt, the exact same thing happened. I couldn't perfect block due to the debuffs the Mantis gives you. Attempt number three, and despite being attacked by two Mants, he only cared about hitting me. Attempt number four, same attack, and I died again. Finally, on my fifth attempt, I was able to take down the Mantis, and I got one head, two claws, and seven chunks, although I did forget to use Dissection Expert. Whoops. I needed to kill her once more, though. The start of this fight perfectly shows how broken this is. I perfect block every single attack, and I still get a bleed debuff, which is dumb. She then does a scream, which can't be blocked, stacking even more debuffs onto me. And to finish it off, I perfect block the attack here, but she continues giving me no time to back up or heal and just killing me anyway. Attempt number two, this stupid mega combo thing takes me out again as I can't parry anything. On attempt three, this was actually my fault as I failed to avoid these ground attacks. That's one death that's my fault, and like five that I couldn't prevent. On attempt four, I'm running around the tree to escape the mantis, and he just jumps on me, killing me instantly. Another attack that can't be blocked. On attempt five, I get hit with the scream, which prevents me from parrying, and then he does the stupid mega attack straight afterwards. Like, what am I supposed to do here? Teleport away? On attempt six, he decided to jump and then land on me, neither of which can be blocked, which is guaranteed to kill you on woe difficulty. This time, after seven attempts, I threw my club to finish her off, making sure to equip Dissection Expert before looting, but getting the exact same drops along with a gold card. I of course added the trinket to my collection, meaning we only needed five more. Back to the pipe to attempt to get as many twinkling shells as possible. This final scarab had other ideas though, as he yeah. yeeted me through the gap down below. Time for another stupid death to two Ladybird Lava at once. Stupid death, stupid death, they're funny cause they're true. Stupid death, stupid death, hope next time it's not you. <laughs> On day 127, I was able to pick up the infected ladybug gold card, adding yet another to the collection. I should add, most of these days were spent killing creatures, non-stop for gold cards. And you'll see at the end there was one in particular that I was really unlucky with. With the mantis drops, I was able to make and fully upgrade the assassin helmet and leggings. I used the super duper to dupe some pupa leather and then crafted and upgraded the assassin chest plate too. It's worth noting I picked the bulky path here as I felt the sleek upgrade wasn't really worth it and this armor has really low defense anyway. I also made sure to harvest my muscle sprout farm, which was now at full capacity growing 60 muscle sprouts every time. After what feels like years in the hedge, I was finally able to get enough spiderlings to max out Assassin, unlocking stage 3. So it was time to head back to the salt mines as I needed more salt to make globs. While here, I managed to get the shiny salt crystal, a trinket I already had. I used the salt to upgrade my Widow Dagger to level 9 and grabbed some spider sliders from the cookery, meaning I was ready. On the way, I decided to break a donut. Apparently there was a sign next to this saying Donut Break, because this thing gave me nothing. What a scam. Wasp Queen attempt number two. Here we go. Enjoy. I started with sticky fingers to steal drops, and then switched to the salt trinket later into the fight. I'm not going to show all the footage here, but remember, she has infinite summons. This fight took like 10 minutes because every time I got her close, she would summon wasps and heal back to a quarter health. But eventually, I was able to take down the Wasp Queen and got a head six chunks and three wings. Hey look, it's my best friend again. Time to die, and then not get a trinket or a gold card. This is getting ridiculous. I put the assassin armor on a stand, and this meant we've collected all of the armor 
from before the most recent update, which was nice. I was making good progress on the trophy and stuffed bug collection, but was still missing some key elements. I decided to use 4000 raw science to dupe the mantis head, which was the cheapest head I had ever received. <clears throat> this allowed me to complete the stuffed mantis. I also added a table, picture frame and vase to the cosy area just to increase the coziness even more. After collecting a bunch of bee fuzz, I was able to fill in even more of these stuffed bugs. Thank God for Dissection Expert, or if I would have been killing bees for weeks. Hey, my best friend is back again, and guess what? I still didn't steal the trinket. Not only that, but I died. Not once, not twice, but three more times. I'm not kidding, most of my deaths on this world are to this stupid three combo attack that can't be blocked. Time to use some spoiled meat slurry to farm gnats. One of them ate the slurry, and I didn't need a new pet, so I took care of it, getting a cool grave in the process. I also got the gnat gold card. Whoa, I died to the infected wolf spider again. Who would have seen that one coming? Not me. After seeing the brutal murder of a weevil, I had to take the knee for WLM. While doing this, an ant killed another weevil. So I killed the ant and then took the knee again. I mean, do you really need to see the deaths at this point? I just want this stupid trinket. But no, we have to get killed over and over. I would just reload until I get it, but my chat said I wasn't allowed. I equipped the termite chestplate as I needed moth fuzz, and I wanted to try it out. Turns out it doesn't help against the dust attack that the moth does. What a waste of resources. I took the moth out and got two scales and six fuzz. Time for another moth, and this time I stole two scales, and then it dropped a scale along with eight fuzz. This dissection expert mutation goes crazy. I was trying to get to a third moth location on the stump, but these wasps were guarding the way up and kept killing me every single time. Eventually, I was able to get to the moth and kill it, getting another four fuzz. My glider had broken, and on the way down, so did my legs. I also needed green shield bug parts, so I took one out as well. Then a black ox beetle charged through its dead body before I could even see it. That wasn't fun, fun, fun. Then I actually was killed by a group of ticks. I'm not joking, I was seething with rage at this point, and I'm pretty sure I cried for the next five minutes. Fun, fun, fun. Finally back home with all my loot, I was able to complete a bunch more stuffed bugs with the resources we had collected from the moths and green shield bug. I also made the wasp helmet and chest plate and added them to an armor stand. I was too broke to make the leggings. He's a brokey! I took on one more green shield bug, giving me the parts I needed to finish the stuffed version and the trophy. Back to gold farming in the termite nest. And this time I was finally able to get my first termite gold card, which was the termite worker. Guess which enemy I died to for the 7 millionth time. I used the super duper to duplicate the wasp queen head, which cost 4,000 raw science, this was the cheapest head I'd received since the last time I made the joke about five minutes ago. Using this head, I began cooking the moldy hoagie, which I would need to summon the infected broodmother. After a couple of hours punching everything in sight, I was able to unlock stages two and three of Lil Fist, which was huge, as we needed this mutation for the infected broodmother fight. With the moldy hoagie cooked, the first thing I did was head into the oak lab and use the super duper to duplicate it, as it only costs a thousand raw science, which is much easier than collecting all the resources you need to craft it again. I was trying to kill stuff with my hammer for Smasher, and managed to die to an orc fire ant. After a few more kills, I finally had stage 3 of the Smasher mutation. In real life, I'm still at stage 0. Finally, after 40 days of killing and stealing from the infected wolf spider, I was able to get the volatile fang trinket. With this trinket, I was now ready for the infected broodmother. Time for the biggest, baddest boss of them all. The build I used here was one I made a guide on, but has since been nerfed, sadly. I began by peeping the boss and then stealing two infected chunks from it. Unfortunately, I didn't realize it does damage upon landing, so, as I had been hit, I had to restart the boss fight. On attempt 2, I got to stage 2, but walked right into a bomb again, dealing damage to me and forcing me to reset. Time for attempt 3. As you can see, my strategy was to use Lil Fist, 
to stack massive damage on the boss in stage 1. Then, once it was low, I would heal it using explosions from the Volatile Fang Trinket, before stacking my Lil Fist even higher. Then, when my shield was close to broken, I finished her off, and move to the second stage. At this point, the Lil Fist multiplier is around 150x. I switch my gear and mutation before she comes back to life, and then do massive damage with every hit. I run away from the bombs, as if I get hit, my stack gets reset, and I have to restart the boss fight. Stage 2 was quickly over, and it was on to stage 3. All I have to do is not get hit, and every punch I do does massive damage. I manage to block every attack and avoid the bombs, and destroy the infected brood on my third attempt. I equip Dissection Expert, and upon looting I got three chunks, two fangs, three venom, and the gold card. This also meant we had now completed another objective, beating the infected broodmother. With the drops, I headed to the resource analyzer and scanned them all, unlocking the armor, stuffed version, trophy, weapon, and some furniture, while killing bees for Burgle's quest, I managed to get the B gold card, adding another to the collection. On day 145, I made a deal with my chat. I had killed 428 aphids, and still had no gold card. If I didn't get the gold card before day 150, then I would sacrifice Houdini, my pet aphid, to see if he had the gold card. It was risky, but I needed all the golds I could get. On day 147, I had to spend the rest of my raw science duplicating Wasp Queen heads and wings, as I didn't want to have to deal with her again. I also managed to pick up a gold card for the Infected Weevil, after about 150 kills. Now I know what you're thinking, Infected Brood again? No. I was actually using the Stealing Trinket and Mutation to steal chunks. There were two reasons for this. Number one. I needed 20 chunks for the stuffed version and trophy. Number two, I wanted to see if I could get lucky and steal the trinket. My strategy here was to go in, steal two parts, die, and then come back and resummon the boss. Since I had nothing equipped when I died, it meant none of my gear took damage, and the only durability loss was from blocking attacks. After a few attempts, I finally stole the trinket, and eventually I had 20 chunks too. Ignore the fact that I actually stole two trinkets. I didn't even need the second one, okay? When I got home, I was finally able to use the chunks to build the infected broodmother trophy and statue. Finally, I finished the display by completing the wasp queen trophy and stuffed version, meaning we had built all trophies and stuffed bugs. On day 148, it happened. I looted an aphid and got the gold card. Finally, after 464 kills, it was in my possession, and more importantly, Houdini was saved. I said I'd never fight her again, but just like the infected broodmother, I needed Wasp Queen chunks as well as the trinket. After many painful fights, I was finally able to steal the trinket and headed home, adding it to my collection. This was actually our final trinket as well, meaning we had collected 28 out of 30, missing only the wondrous wormhole and suspicious ice cap both of which are really rare drops from candies. Candies nuts for your mouth. Ha! <laughs> Got <he. laughs> I had just enough raw science to dupe the Wasp Queen wing one more time, leaving me with 90 raw science. But I now had the resources to make the Bard's Bow and the Bard's Tudor, which I was able to add to the armor stand and item stand, meaning the only armor set missing was from the infected Broodmother. Spoiler alert, we aren't going to have time to get it, there's only one day left. On day 150, I had nothing left but to farm gold cards, so I went all in. I first got the tick gold card from the stump, then, while in the scarab pipe in the undershed, I picked up the dust mite gold card. I dropped into the water down below to farm spiny water fleas, and also got that gold card too. Day 150 was my lucky day. And with that, here is a final look at the base I had built. We have our lovely storage room, level 5 coziness area, and all of the stuffed bugs and trophies in the game, along with 2 out of 3 sets of the new armour. All 10 sign sets, and 28 out of 30 trinkets. With all that said, there was one thing left to do. As always, we finished the world on 100%. If you are curious about my gold cards, here they are at the end. The infected lava still blows my mind to this day. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like on it. Hit the subscribe button to see more grounded videos, and I'll see you in the next grounded video.
Have a great rest of your day.